Hello grade 10 students, Teacher V is here once again and I'm here to guide you about the lesson on conducting a statistical mini research. Week 5 na tayo ng quarter 4 para sa inyo to mga grade 10 learners namin. Ang reference natin is yung deep or learner's packet from Region 4A, Calabarzon. Kaya ilike mo na at i-share ang video na to para dumami pa ang katulad mo na nagmamahal sa mathematics. Now let's begin! This is our first learning task. Rose and Ivan scored 30 and 23 respectively in the National Career Assessment Examination or yung NCAI. The determining factor for a college scholarship is that a student's score should be in the top 10% of the scores of his or her graduating class. The students in the graduating class obtain the following scores in the NCAI. Okay, so merong given dito na score ni Rose and Ivan. Kay Rose, meron siyang 30 score. Then kay Ivan, 23 score sa NCAI. At kailangan makapasok sila dun sa top 10%. So, kung top 10% lang yung kukunin para sa college scholarship, dapat yung kanilang score ay at least nasa 90%. Kasi top 10% ang kukunin, di ba? So, kailangan at least makatungtong sila sa 90%. Okay, now ito yung given ng mga scores ng students sa NKI. And we have here yung interval nila. Pagkatapos, ito yung frequency o yung dami sa bawat class interval. And pag in natin yan, that is equivalent to 99. So, ang gagawin natin, number one, is we're going to complete the table by filling in the values of lower boundaries and less than cumulative frequency. And i-explain natin kung paano yun nakuha. Sa lower boundary, madali lang. Titingin lang tayo dun sa lower limits na tinatawag dito sa ating class interval, yung unang number dyan. Bawasan lang natin ng 0.5. So, 39 minus 0 0.5 is 38. 0.5 tapos 36 minus 0 0.5 35.5 33 minus 0 0.5 is 32.5 so hanggang dulo yan 3 minus 0 0.5 is 2.5 so ganun natin kinukuha yung lower boundary minus 0 0.5 lang sa ating lower limits para naman sa less than cumulative frequency magi start tayo sa pinaka dulo okay kung ano yung pinakadulo dito sa frequency natin, yun din ang ilalagay natin sa dulo nitong less than cumulative frequency. Kung ito ay 1, eh di 1 na rin dito. So, 1, then i-add natin sa kasunod na frequency. 1 plus 1 is 2. So, pakita nga natin. Ayan. So, ito yon yung 1. So, kanopya lang natin dito sa frequency. Yun din yung nasa dulo ng less than cumulative frequency. 1, and then i-add natin dito sa kasunod na frequency. 1 is 2. 2 plus 2, 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 8, 16. Plus 7, 23. Plus 9, 32. Plus 10, 42. Plus 22, 64. Plus 13, 77. Plus 9, 86. Plus 7, 93. And plus 6, 99. Dapat yung ating unang-unang less than cumulative frequency na number ay equal dun sa total N or frequency ng given data natin. So, kung ang N ay 99, dapat 99 din yung unang isusulat natin dito sa less than cumulative frequency. Ayan, meron na tayong less than cumulative frequency. Para naman natin makukuha ang midpoint. etong XM, ang ibig sabihin niya is yung midpoint ng ating class interval or yung nasa gitna nito. So, so 39 to 41. So, ano yung nasa gitna niyan? So, ang nasa gitna niyan is 40. Okay, 40. Then, ito, sa gitna nila, 36. Ito e yung gitna nila, 37. Okay, ito ang gitna nila, 34. Here, 31. Hanggang dito sa dulo, ang gitna ng 3 to 5. 3, 4, hanggang 5 is 4. Or, para mas mapadali yung pagkuha ninyo ng midpoint, ganito, i-add nyo lang yung dalawa na given sa class interval, i-add nyo, then divide mo sa 2. Yun yung midpoint. Again, para makuha ang midpoint, i-add mo yung dalawang given, yung lower limits, saka yung upper limits, tapos i-divide mo sa 2. Yun yung midpoint. Okay? Kasi may mga interval kasi na malalayo. So, alam nga naman magmano-mano pa tayo magbilang kung ano yung nasa gitna. So, pagka medyo malayo ang interval or pagitan, i-add mo na lang, tapos divide mo sa 2. Paano naman makukuha yung FXM? Ibig sabihin nito, frequency 
times natin sa midpoint. So, itong F, times mo rito sa XM. So, 6 times 40 is 240. 7 times 37, 259. 9 times 34, 306. Hanggang dito sa dulo. Then, i-add natin yan. So, we have the summation of F of XM is 2,616. So, inad lang natin to yung ating frequency times the midpoint. So, kompleto na yung table natin. Ano susunod na gagawin? Kurin natin yung mean. So, yung summation of FXM over N. So, i-divide lang natin tong 2,616 sa 99 sa N natin. So, ang answer dyan is 26.42. So, ang ating mean or parang average score ng students ng graduating class na kumuha ng NKI is 26.42. Pero hindi lang yan ang tinatanong sa atin. Ang kailangan kasing malaman natin is we're going to find the third quartile, 70th percentile, and the sixth decile of the set of data. Ayan, punta na naman tayo sa measures of position. Kunin natin yung mga to. Una yung third quartile. Okay, so apply ulit natin yung formula. Ang formula lang natin naman sa third quartile is KN over 4. Ayan. Tapos yung meron tayong lower boundary, cumulative frequency before the quartile class, okay, the frequency and the interval. Kunin muna natin yung KN over 4. KN over 4, so since ito ay third quartile, ang K natin is 3. Ang N natin is 99. 3 times 99 divided by 4, the answer is 74.25. Tingin tayo ngayon sa less than cumulative frequency. Dito tayo titingin. Saan papasok ang 74.25? Papasok siya dito sa interval or sa class na 30 to 32. Pwede na natin i-identify yung lower boundary. So dito, tayo titingin. Ito yung third quarter class natin. Lower boundary is 29.5. Yung ating cumulative frequency below or before na ating quartile class is yung nasa ibaba nito which is 64, okay? Hindi yung 77, kundi yung 64, yung nasa ibaba. Then, ang ating frequency, or yung F, is 13, and yung interval, or pagitan nila, is tatlo. Diba? 3, 4, 5. Or 3 plus 3, 6, plus 3, 9, plus 3, 12. So, ang pagitan nila is 3. Substitute na natin sa ating formula. Lower boundary is 29.5 plus 74.25, nang galing to dito, sa so nakuha natin 3N, over 4, then minus dun sa ating cumulative frequency below na ating quartile class, so that is 64, over yung ating frequency 13, then multiply natin sa interval na 3. Unahin yung nasa loob ng parenthesis, we have 10.5, we have 10.25 over 13, pagka-divide natin dito, i-times natin sa 3, we have 2.37. Then, yung 2.37, saka natin i-add sa ating 29.5 or lower boundary, we have 31.87. So, ang ating third quartile is 31.87. Paano naman yung 70th percentile? So, ganun lang din, pero ang ating KN dito is over 100. So, KN over 100. So, KN, so ang K natin is 70, dahil 70th percentile, 70 times yung N, no, 99, divide by 100, the answer is 69.3. Hanapin natin yung 69.3 dito sa ating less than cumulative frequency. Saan siya papasok? Okay, dito sa class interval, interval na 30 to 32. So, katulad lang din kanina dun sa third quartile. So, isulat natin yung lower boundary, 29.5. Yung cumulative frequency below or before, the Part percentile class is 64. Ating F is 13 and ang ating interval is 3. So, isinabstitute lang natin dito sa ating formula. Then, inuna natin itong nasa loob ng parenthesis. Yung 69.3, galing yan dito sa KN over 100. Okay, then... 5.3 divided by 13 times 3, we have 1.22. Yung 1.22, i-add natin sa 29.5, we have 30.72. Yung ating 70th percentile is 30.72. Next, kailangan yung 6th decile naman. So, decile naman ang gagamitin natin. KN over 10. So, kunin natin yung KN over 10. So, KN or 
k is 6, dahil 6 decile, 6 times 99 over 10, the answer is 59.4. Hanapin natin yung 59.4 kung saan papasok dito sa less than cumulative frequency natin. So, 59.4 ay papasok dito sa class interval na 27 to 29. Kasi ito, 64. So, dito papasok yung 59.4. So, dito na tayo kukuha ng ating lower boundary. So, 26.5, yung ating cumulative frequency below or before is 42. And yung ating frequency or yung F natin dito sa ating decile class is 22 and yung interval or pagitan is 3. Substitute lang natin yung 59.4 nang galing yan sa KN over 10. 59.4 minus yung 42 over yung ating frequency 22. So, 9 lang natin yung nasa loob ng parentheses. So, we have 17.4 over 22. Then, times natin sa 3, we have 2.37. So, pag na-times na natin sa 3, saka pa lang natin i-add sa lower boundary natin na 26.5, we have 28.87. Yung ating 6 decile is equal to 28.87. Okay, yan. Nasagot na natin yung number 2 question. The next question is, what is the percentile rank of Rose and Ivan? Unahin muna natin yung kay Rose. At ang score ni Rose based sa problem is 30. Saan papasok dito sa scores yung 30? So dito, nakahighlight na siya sa 30 to 32. Diyan papasok yung score ni Rose na 30. At ito ang formula natin para makuha ang percentile rank. So i-substitute na natin. So 100 over 99. So ang N natin is 99. Then, yung P is yung 30 na score ni Rose. Then, yung lower boundary natin is 29.5. Multiply natin sa frequency, which is 13. Then, over the interval, plus 64. Yung 64 natin dito is yung cumulative frequency below or before ng ating napiling class. So, ito ay 77, pero hindi ito ang kukunin natin, kundi yung before niya, or yung nais sa ibaba niya, and that is 64. Unahin natin yung nandito sa pinakaloob na parenthesis. So, 30 minus 29.5 is 0 0.5. Saka natin i-times sa 13. Then, pag na-times na natin, saka natin i-divide sa 3. Then, i-add natin sa 64. So, ang answer sa 0 0.5 times 13 divided by 3 is 2.17. Plus, yung 64... The answer is 66.17. Yung 66.17, saka lang natin ita times dito sa 1.01 .01, o yung 100 divided by 99. At ang lalabas na sagot dyan is 66.83 or a round off na natin kasi percentile rank naman ang kinukuha natin o yung percentage. So, we can say that 67% yung ating magiging sagot. Meaning to say, Rose score falls on the 67% of the class who got the grade of less than or equal to 30. Next, tignan naman natin yung score ni Ivan. Ang score ni Ivan ay 23. So dito papasok ang kanyang score sa class score na 21 to 23. And ito ang ating formula, ganun din. So 100 over 99, yung N natin is 99, then 23 yung score ni Ivan, minus 20.5. Yung lower boundary natin dito sa napili nating class is 20.5. Okay, then i-multiply natin sa frequency, and that is 9, over yung ating interval is 3. Plus, okay, yung nasa ibaba nitong 32, and that is 23. So, i-minus muna natin to yung nasa pinakaloob na parenthesis. Then, multiply natin sa 9, 2.5 times 9, then divide sa 3. Lalabas dyan is 7.5. 7.5 plus yung 23, the answer is 30.5. Yung 30.5, saka natin multiply sa 1.01. .01. Ang answer is 30.81 or round off na lang natin, 31%. Okay, so meaning to say, Ivan's score falls on the 31% of the class who got the grade of less than or equal to 23. Kaya ang next question is this. 
based on their percentile and percentile ranks, will Rose and Ivan receive a scholarship? Explain your answer. Sa palagay nyo, makakapasok kaya sila dun sa top 10% nung kanilang class? Okay, let's see. So, Rose score falls on the 67% of the class who got the grade of less than or equal to 30. Samantalang kay Ivan, nandun siya sa 31% of the class who got the grade of less than or equal to 23. Pero tandaan, sabi, kailangan na pasok sila dun sa top 10%. Okay? Nang kanilang class. Ibig sabihin, kailangan makapasok sila at least 90%. Therefore, ito na yung answer natin. To receive the scholarship, they must be included at least on the 90% and above of the scores since the scholarship score should be in the top 10% of the class. So, meaning greater than or equal to 90%. So, dapat nasa 90th percentile man lang sila. And yung scores na nakuha natin, nakita naman natin, they are less than 90%. Hence, they are not qualified for the scholarship. Pwede silang mag-try ulit sa iba. Okay, baka sakaling sa ibang school may baba yung qualification. Okay? Ayan. So, I hope na may natutunan ka kay Teacher B ngayon. At kung may natutunan ka, click mo na yung share button para i-share mo sa mga kaklase mo. Matuto din sila sa mathematics. At tapos yung lesson natin, medyo mahaba na. Ganun talaga. Statistics, medyo mahaba yung proseso. Pero alam ko, kayang-kaya mo yan kung gugustuhin mo at pag-aaralan mo mabuti. Okay? Follow me on my Facebook page, VTeach Channel, and kita-kita tayo ulit sa susunod kong video lesson. See you again and goodbye!